Hello and welcome back and today we're going to tackle a subject that I probably should have tackled right away at the beginning of this channel, namely what is NAS? So let's get straight to it. Now NAS or Network Attached Storage is something that's grown in increasing popularity every year for about the last six or seven years since it's become relatively mainstream now as a form of storage. Traditional storage was the ability to connect either an internal hard drive on your PC or laptop or whatever, or connecting an external drive like a WD password or a Seagate backup via the likes of USB and accessing that storage. Now some of the limitations of that were of course the fact that only one person could access that data at any given time and also that you needed to carry that data around with you in order to access its contents. And that is the reason why Network Attached Storage or NAS has grown in popularity. It gives you the ability to access files wherever you are in the world. You can access them on the same network, so in other words, if your device is sharing the same internet as other devices inside the home, that's a network, if you will, uh, as well as accessing anywhere as long as you've got internet access and where your NAS lives, that has internet access. So straight away, the big advantage of NAS is the fact that you can access your files, but what is NAS. Well, NAS is very, very similar indeed to traditional storage. It's like an external hard drive where all your data lives. However, what a NAS does is it connects to your router or switch. So that's basically where all the where the internet comes from, if you want to be a complete layman. Uh, the router or switch in the corner of the room, and therefore, therefore gives your every device on the internal network access to those files as well as the internet having access to those files with obvious security and permission precautions. Now, the reason NAS is so popular is because with modern mobile devices, your iPhones, your smartphones, your TVs, and basically all media moving from more physical media, such as uh, DVD, Blu-ray, and even VHS all those decades ago, and moving towards a more digital plane, these files, it's easier to have them all in one location where you can access them everywhere rather than multiple copies. And then what a NAS does is it keeps all that data in one place and therefore gives everyone that you give permission to access to those files. Now, internet access is controlled by some, um, you need to have something set up called DDNS, Dynamic uh, Domain Naming Service. And now, DDNS that comes with most NAS providers gives you the ability to access that data no matter where you are in the world Whereas a localized folder or a localized external drive, you can only really access it via the connecting device. You, there are ways to make a USB drive uh, network accessible, but you'd have to leave the PC on for a, forever. The other thing that NAS gives you is the ability to have catered access to files. An external drive will it, invariably, in most cases, only give you the ability to access a basic folder structure of a drive. What a NAS does is it can let you both read and write data in a far more tailored manner. The example being, of course, Plex Media Servers. The ability to have not only all of your data in one place, but see in a far more, far more uh, vibrant and graphical format that takes records of what you've watched and makes recommendations and utilizes other resources to scrape something called metadata so that's like trailers and graphics and images and background information around data that's associated with it and in far more presentable fashion think of things like uh, Netflix and Amazon instant and all those um, streaming platforms what a NAS is in terms of video are those but you own the server you own the data on that NAS that's another way in which NAS has grown in popularity and predominantly what a lot of home users buy NAS is for but Another big, big use of NAS is, of course, backups. Because a single NAS device connected via the internet and the internal network that you have at home will back up, if you wish it to, all the connected devices. So imagine if you're a family, you know, your standard 2.4 children. If you've all got a smartphone, you've all got pictures you're taking and data, what you can do is set it up so once a day, or even constantly, or more than likely at midnight or something when you're all a kip, you can have all that data backed up onto the NAS. And that way, if you lose your phone, your iPad, your tablet, your laptop, your whatever, that data is still safe on the NAS. Likewise, more than just backing up, you've also got surveillance. Another tailored way in which NAS has become very, very interesting indeed is setting up individual IP cameras, internet protocol cameras around your home or office, and they're quite cheap. Some of them as low as 20, 30 quid, some of them with more advanced features, pan, tilt, zoom, night vision, all the rest of it for over 100 quid, and you can dot them around your home or office, and as long as they share the same network, so that is to say they're all on the same Wi-Fi or cabled network, 
as the NAS, they can write data and take recordings to the NAS, and the NAS will have surveillance software that if someone breaks into your home and the camera sees it, you get an email alert, a text alert, all of this is included free with most NAS. So that's one of the other big ways in which NAS has grown in popularity. But what is the difference between NAS and traditional storage devices like hard drives in your PC or an external USB drive? Well, there's two main differences. One we've already touched on, that you can only access local storage, that's what we call USB and stuff storage like, um, storage like that, via the device it's connected to. Whereas a NAS can be accessed by a mobile phone, via mobile apps, it can be accessed over the network with a smart TV, it can be accessed via your mobile phone, it can be accessed in a multitude of ways. And don't get me wrong, all of them are safe. There'll be two-step verification, encryption, login credentials, and lots of safety measures to stop people breaking into your data. The other big difference between NAS and traditional local storage is speed. Because there is no denying NAS will never be as fast as local storage. It gets better and better all the time, but local storage with a lot of connections such as USB 3, USB 3.1 Gen 2, that's 10 gigabits per second. On top of that, you've got the likes of Thunderbolt 1, 2, and 3, so 10, 20, and 40 gigabits per second uh, transmission speeds. NAS will never keep up. Traditional speeds in the, uh, a network environment are 1 gigabit Ethernet. So it's 1 gigabit, 1,000 bits. Whereas um, USB, uh, even USB 3, which has been around now for, I would say, coming close to uh, eight years, I think, maybe even a decade, that's five gigabits per second. So this old connection, um, uh, USB, less just under 10 years old, is five times faster than your internal network. So NAS will never be as fast as localized storage, even on its most basic level. There have been ways in which they've increased the speed of network with things like 10 gigabit ethernet. And 10 gigabit ethernet has existed around in a lot of places, but it is not commonly found in most TV and, and DLNA, Digital Living Network Alliance um, devices. On top of that, 10 GB is still quite expensive. It's a lot cheaper than it was, but it's still by no means mainstream. So if you're looking for, if you're the only person accessing this data and you ac want to access it locally and no one else, NAS probably isn't for you. But in every other regard, network attached storage is very much the coming thing. And it's pretty the whole reason why this YouTube channel exists. So if you've got any questions about NAS, the right NAS for you or the suitability of NAS in your environment, do go down in the comments and let me know. And do visit me at nascompares.com. At the blog, we cover all the different NASs and how, they're, and how and who they're right for. If you've enjoyed this video, I found it helpful, do click like and subscribe, largely because I want to be this channel to get, you know, get bigger and better. And I can't do that without your help. So if you enjoyed it, toss me a subscribe or a like. It's the very least you could do. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.